Hi, my name is Paul. I'm a senior loan officer here at C2 Financial. Next February will be my 20th consecutive year in the industry, and I'm starting these video series to help everyone cut through the smoke and mirrors about mortgages in general. I'll provide facts and straight answers so that you can tell the difference between what's real and what's not, since there's a ton of sales pitches and misleading information out there. So here's a common question I get asked. How do I qualify for a home loan? First, the basics. In any mortgage, regardless of the type of the mortgage that you're applying for, three key components determine your qualification. It's credit, collateral, and capacity. Credit is not just what your score is, but it's the overall depth, the length, and the utilization of your credit. It's not just a matter of the score, it's why the score is where it is. There's a huge difference between a college student who has a 740 FICO because he's been paying on his first $2,000 credit limit visa card on time versus someone else who has the same exact 740 credit score with 15 years of credit history, including prior home ownership and large auto loans that have since been paid off. Collateral is the essentially the value of the thing that you are putting up for the loan. So in the case of mortgages, it's always the value of the house versus how much you were borrowing against it. We in the industry calculate this in a percentage that we call LTV or loan to value ratio. The higher the LTV, typically the more expensive the loan gets. Common sense explanation. If you're borrowing $300,000 against a home that's worth a million dollars, that's 30% LTV. That's a very safe investment and a safe loan in the eyes of the bank or the investor. It's a lot safer if the value of the house is higher in proportion to the amount of the loan that you're getting. On the same $300,000 loan, if your home value comes in at three dollars you're now at 80% LTV. That's a lot riskier loan and a more expensive loan for you. Capacity, it's the ability to pay back the loan that the borrower could demonstrate with a documentation in an acceptable form. It doesn't matter if your home is worth $3 million and you're only borrowing $100,000 against it. If we can't demonstrate the fact that you have the financial ability to pay back the $100,000, there's not going to be a loan there. To some, that doesn't seem fair. I hear people say to me all the time, Hey Paul, my home is worth $800,000 and I'm only borrowing $200,000. Why is this a problem? Yeah, we can understand that you have a ton of equity in the home. But one of the things you have to demonstrate that we have to qualify is your ATP or ability to pay back the loan. It is illegal actually for us to lend based upon the equity position of the subject property alone. That's a category requirement that has to be satisfied, the ATP. So in our industry, we call that DTI or debt to income ratio as a quick illustration of a guideline limit. If your gross income before taxes and deduction is $1,000 and your housing expense, by that I mean PITIA, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and association dues, exceed $450 out of that $1,000 gross income, you typically don't qualify for a mortgage. That's because if you add every other expense on top of the mortgage, like your gas, your electricity bill, any other bills you may have, it's very likely you're not going to be able to keep up with that mortgage payment. I hope this helps and it gives you some basic idea of the requirements of a home loan. If you have any other questions, please contact me. My direct number is 714-582-2342. My email address is paul at c2financial.com. Thank you for watching.